Now, today I'm doing my final checkout on this Pioneer SX440. Since I do have a buyer for the unit, I'm going to sell it. And what I'm going to do today is feed in a square wave. I'm going to do that twice. Once at 200 hertz, because that will cover down to 20 hertz. And it will cover up to 2000 hertz. And then I'm going to feed in a 2000 hertz square wave. That's going to cover up to 20,000 hertz. And again, back down to 200 hertz. Now, for the first test, I've got my scope. I've got it here in the DC position. It's in the AC right now. This will be DC. Because if we look right here, if we look here, what happens if I put it in the AC position, you notice this is somewhat steeper than this because the scope when it's in the AC position it does have a capacitor in there in the front end basically and that's going to go ahead and uh, make this square wave well seem not square so that's what I'm doing for the first test and here you can see here uh, my square, square wave here isn't at all square and but I think this is due to the two output capacitors here now, because this receiver isn't a dual, you can see the capacitors down here. There's two of them. This isn't a dual uh, supply. It doesn't have a positive and a negative supply. It has just a positive supply. And if these capacitors wouldn't be in there, um, we would have DC voltage going to the speaker, and that's what we don't want. In fact, we would have to complete DC voltage. I think it was uh, half of the supply voltage or something like that that would be going to the speaker. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do next then is I'm gonna go ahead and, or rather after I do the two uh, the 2000 hertz test, then I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the scope probes right ahead of the capacitors here. These capacitors here, they go directly to the speakers. So basically that's at the very end of the audio uh, chain. Now I'm feeding in a 2000 hertz square wave so I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments here. Okay this looks a lot better. Unfortunately I can't get the camera to focus any better. This isn't the best camera in the world. Um, but the square wave seems to be well it's not perfect but I'd say rather decent square wave so now let's go ahead and um, take a look at the square wave when it's coming into the capacitors I might add now I'm taking the square wave reading directly across the dummy load which comes um, the signals going from that the output capacitors there to the speaker terminals and now into my dummy load and see I got two probes hooked up well I'm gonna go ahead and remove those now and uh, put them across the capacitors, capacitors and see what we get there now here you can see that I've got the scope probes hooked up to the capacitors and these are I can read here 25 volts a thousand microfarads and the older units um, you'll often see something like this will be large capacitors and if you were to trace this back it'll go directly to the speaker terminals so let's take a look at the square wave here now here's that 2000 hertz square wave still uh, I didn't readjust the um, audio generator yet and here we can see it's looking not perfect but it's looking okay also I might have to add when you do this test the bass and treble have to be in a neutral position loudness has to be off because if not you're gonna get and put it on well that didn't do much at all you can see there a little bit but if I mess with the bass and treble there you can see that really does make a difference this is the bass here Okay, that being said, um, now I'll go ahead and take a look at the 200 hertz square wave. 
and here we can see the square wave now the 200 Hertz square wave and you can see this channel looks perfectly fine but this channel I mean it's not terrible seems to be seems to be okay and I'm not yet sure whether I'm gonna go ahead and um, work on this any further probably the best thing would be for me to just uh, put new electrolytic capacitors in the um, on the tone board and preamplifier but I don't think that I'm going to get any more money that way I'm just going to have a lot more work because uh, to be honest um, it still sounds decent it's not like you can hear this you would not be able to hear this but I can't and I've seen square waves that are a lot worse so I have to give this some thought whether I'm actually going to uh, leave this as it is or not um, also now we can go ahead and check out the um, these output capacitors so what I'm going to do is get the ESR meter and um, check them out of course if they were leaking in any way then we would have uh, DC at the speaker terminal speaker terminals we could measure that so I've got the ESR meter out first thing I'm going to do is discharge the capacitor and for this I'm just going to use some alligator clips here it's always a good idea to discharge the capacitors I've got a little um, alligator clip with a resistor in between so it doesn't discharge that fast but of course I can't find it right now and I can't spend 15 minutes looking for it so we're going to do the discharge this way back in the old days we used to just use a screwdriver bang so that was that and I just do the other one and then we'll hook the meter across So according to my chart on this ESR meter, we should be reading less than point, we should be reading, I think it's point 0.1 or less than point 0.1 here for a thousand um, microfarad capacitor, which is under 63 volts. So I if I can get that there. Okay, that's point 0.1, so that should be okay. And that's point 0.1, that should be okay too. So, um, yeah, that seems to check out, seems to check out okay as far as uh, ESR is concerned. So as a final test, I'm going to go ahead and do a capacitor leakage test. And for this, I'm going to use my old heat kit. IT28 capacitor checker which is a pretty useful piece of equipment um, as you can see I got the leads hooked up of course I have to have one in the capacitor I've uh, got it unsoldered so basically it's out of circuit if not you're not going to be able to do this test correctly now we can take a look here at the uh, capacitor checker and with the capacitor checker right now basically I'm checking capacitance um, and right now it's showing me about a thousand microfarads or right over a thousand microfarads which is uh, what it's supposed to do basically um, now I'll go ahead and check for the we'll do the leakage test so if the eye stays closed or it's really narrow then we know we've got a leakage problem so let me go ahead and apply some voltage here so here's the capacitor checker and I'm going to go ahead and check it at um, 25 volts because it's rated at 25 volts and 1000 microfarads I could start out slow of course you don't want to go over 25 volts because that's maximum then um, right now I think I'm in a discharge position and I'm going to go ahead and put it into a leakage position and I think it's kind of hard to see but the eye is like open now and if if this capacitor were to be leaky the eye would close and stay closed or I think it would just open up a little bit it would be really narrow so again it should 
I think what it's going to do now, it's going to go ahead and close and then open. So it's doing exactly that. So I would say this capacitor passes a test. Of course, electrolytic capacitors always have some inherent leakage. You can't get around that. But I'm going to go ahead and um, I think this do the other one but I'm going to do this off camera since having a camera in the way is always a hassle. Now here's another look at the 200 Hertz square wave which is coming out of the back of the receiver and here we have what's called a low frequency phase shift and of course it's slanted toward the back here um, and if it would be slanted up here this way we would have a high frequency phase shift and I think this is just caused by the those two output capacitors of course one for each channel and I think this is just a design thing a few years after this receiver came out they stopped using these output capacitors I would say that this is kind of like a drawback um, these things had I don't know if you would be able to uh, hear this I can't say I'm not sure how many percent um, this is slanted down. I guess it's, it looks like it'd be over 10% at least. So I don't think I have anything else to add to this video for now. Um, thanks for watching.